What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at finding partial sums of an arithmetic sequence. So here's the formula we're going to need, and let's get started. So for this first question here, let's add up the first 50 odd numbers. And we're starting at 1, the next odd number would be 3, then 5, then 7. And this list will continue, but let's pretend I don't want to make a list of 50 numbers. That's going to take really long. So what we could do is we could say a sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. So this is the formula for the nth term of any arithmetic sequence. And remember, this sequence here qualifies as being an arithmetic sequence because it's going up by 2 each time, that it's just doing plus 2 each time to get from 1 to the next. So here, the first term a is equal to 1. The common difference, well, we're adding 2 each time to go from 1 to the next. So our formula for our nth term is equal to the first term, which is 1, plus n minus 1 times the common difference is 2. So in this case, we want to find the first 50, uh, the sum of the first 50 odd numbers. So here we're letting n equal 50. And the first thing we should find is what is the 50th odd number? So we'd have 1 plus 50 minus 1 times 2. And 50 minus 1 is 49. 49 times 2 is 98, and 98 plus 1 is 99. So if I want this list to end, I could just say we're going up to 99. So I'll just show the odd number right before 99 to say 97, and then this list ends at 99. So these are the numbers that we're, we want to add up together, all the numbers from 1 to 99, but just the odd numbers. So the formula from the other page, we said the shortcut to this, or a fast way of doing this, is we're doing n times a plus a sub n divided by 2. So if we want to find the sum of the first 50 numbers, this is going to be equal to 50 times the first term plus the 50th term in our sequence divided by 2. So now we just plug in we have 50 times the first term in our list is 1 plus the 50th odd number we showed here is 99 and then divide by 2 so this works out to we have s sub 50 equals 50 times and this is gonna work out to 100 divided by 2 which is 50 and 50 times 50 is 2500 so the sum of the first 50 odd numbers is 2500 now if we want we could check this but it really is going to take a long time to do this. If we had to do 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and add this all the way down to 99, but this sum should work out to 2,500. So let's look at one that's a little bit more abstract. So we're told here that we have an arithmetic sequence, and the first term of the arithmetic sequence is 12, and the common difference is 8. But this time around, we want to find the number of terms that we have to add together to get a partial sum of 2,700. So they're telling us here that the partial sum is equal to 2,700. Well, one thing that we could do here is come up with the formula for a sub n. So for questions like this, that they could be a little bit tricky. Is It's nice to come up with a formula for the nth term of the sequence. So we have 12 plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 8. All right, remember the formula from before? We have uh, the nth term of the sequence for an arithmetic sequence is a plus n minus 1 times d. So we could just replace the first term and the common difference here. So now what we want to think about is we have the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is equal to n times a plus a sub n divided by 2. So this time around, we're solving for the value of n. We want to know how many terms do we have to add together. Now, just know here we could solve this question by brute force, meaning that if we start at 12 and we have a common difference of 8, the numbers in our sequence are going to be 12, 20, then 28, then 36, and they're going to follow this pattern. So we could sit there with a the calculator and do 12 plus 20 plus 28 plus 36, and then add another 8, and then add that. But all we would need to happen here is to have an answer like n equal 500, and then we would be there for a really long time with a calculator. So we'll do this algebraically. So what we're going to do is we're going to make replacements for s sub n. So we'll just divide this here so we don't uh, confuse the setup here. S sub n is going to be equal to 2700. n is what we're solving for. How many terms do we have to add together? a is equal to 12 plus, and then a sub n, we're going to make the replacement for, is equal to 12 plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 8. And this is all being divided by 2. So what we could do here is we're just going to do the algebra. And this algebra might get a little bit messy, but we'll be fine here. So what we could do first is multiply both sides by 2. So multiplying both sides by 2 will get this denominator to go away. And 2700 times 2 
is 5400. So we'll have 5400 equals, and then we're going to have n times, and notice what we have here. We have 12 plus 12. So that we could just combine right away. That's going to be 24 plus n minus 1 times 8. So now we could just expand the right side a little bit more. This is going to be n times, and we'll have 24 plus 8 times n is 8n, and 8 times negative 1 is minus 8. And we just got to give ourselves more space. So now from here, we're just going to do, uh, we'll simplify the inside. So we have 5400 equals n times, and 24 minus 8 is 16. So we have 16 plus 8n on the inside. So now we could distribute the n on the outside. And this is going to give us 5400 equals 16n plus, and we'll have 8n squared. So we have a quadratic here, and we're going to move the 5400 over to the other side. And the only little bit of extra work I want to do here on the right side, on the left side we have 0, but on the right side I want to switch 8n squared with 16n, because now we have a quadratic, and this quadratic what we could do is we could just solve for the roots, and that's going to help us find our actual answer here. So if we go forward with this, maybe one thing I would want to do is divide everything by 8. That way the mental math step is going to be much easier. So we're going to have 0 equals n squared plus 2 times n. And now when we divide 8 goes into 54, it goes into 54 6 times, and there's a remainder of 6. And then 8 goes into 67 times, and that'll get us to 56, so we'll have a remainder of 4. And then 8 goes into 45 times. Okay, so this is the simplification of the previous line. But now we just have to think about 675. And if we break this down, 25 jumps out at me. And I think, all right, 25 times 25 is 625, which means I'm 50 away, so I would need another 2 times 25. So it would be 25 times 27. And you could fact check that, but that should work out here to multiply to 675. And that's going to help us see then that we're going to have n plus 27 times n minus 25, because 27 minus 25 is positive 2. And when we multiply this positive and negative, it gives us negative 675. So our two roots are going to be n equals minus 27 and n equals 25. But this has to make sense in the context of the question. We're saying how many terms do we have to add together in the sequence? And we're not going to add, we can't have negative terms, like a negative amount of terms in a sequence. We can only have positive amount of terms in a sequence. So n equals 25 is definitely our answer. But one thing you could do to check your answer, so let's say we want to be 100% sure that this is our answer. Well, if we think back to before, we said a sub n was equal to 12 plus n minus 1 times 8. And we're claiming here that n equals 25. And remember, the first term of our sequence, our a value here, was equal to 12. So what we want to check out is the sum of the first 25 terms is equal to n, which is 25, times the first term, which is 12, plus the 25th term. And if we need to find the 25th term, we could do a sub 25 equals 12 plus 25 minus 20, uh, 25 minus 1 is 24. So that's going to give us this here. And now if we work this out, we'll just make space. The 25th term of our sequence, we're doing 12 plus and here, if we do 24 times 8, that's going to give us 160 plus 32. I'm doing 8 times 20 is 160. 8 times 4 is 32. And that gives us 192. So if we work this out, the 25th term here is equal to 12 plus 92, which is 204. So now we're going to borrow that. We have this is going to be 12 plus 204 divided by 2. So let's just see how this checks out. We have 25 times, and this is going to give us 216 over 2, which gives us 25 times 108. And if we work this out, first I would do 100 times 25 is 2,500. So we're just practicing the no calculator math. And then I'm doing 8 times 25, and 8 times 25 is 200. And notice here that the sum of the first 25 terms does, in fact, work out to 2,700. So this answer checks out. All right, so this is our last example here. And now we have a word problem. But we have an amphitheater has 50 rows of seats. And there's 30 seats in the first row. So what I like to imagine with these questions is like, all right, the first row is 30. And then an amphitheater, it, it kind of extends out as time goes on. So let's just move this over so we have plenty of space. So the first row has 30. And then the second row, there's going to be 32 seats. The third row, there's going to be 34 seats. And this trend is going to continue all the way to the 50th row. 
But obviously we're not going to list all 50 rows. We could do that, but we're going to use the formula to speed things up. So what that tells us here is that the first term of our arithmetic sequence is 30. And because if we notice here, each row has two more seats, which means we have a common difference of two. So to find the number of seats in the nth row, we would have a sub n equals the first term, which is 30, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So it's helpful here to know how many seats are there in the 50th row. So we'd have 30 plus 50 minus 1 is 49. And then we're multiplying by 2. So this is going to give us 98 plus 30. And 98 plus 30 is going to give us 128. So there are 128 seats in the 50th row. But now we want to use this information to find the total number of seats. So here's our formula. We want to add up all the seats. So we have n times a plus a sub n divided by 2. So the sum of the 50 rows of seats, to find the total number of seats, we're going to add up all the seats in all 50 rows. So we're doing 30 plus 32 plus 34 all the way up to the last 50th row that has 128 seats. So the formula is the fast way of doing this. So notice here we have n equals 50. So just be mindful we're plugging in n equals 50. So we have 50 times and then we have the fraction the number of seats in the first row which is 30 plus the number of seats in the 50th row was 128 and then we're dividing by 2. So now we just have to work this stuff out. Okay, so we simplify this and we'll have our answer. So the sum of the uh, well the sum total of all the seats we have 50 times and if we add 128 plus 30 we're going to have 158 and divide by 2 and if we work this out this is going to be 50 times and it's going to go in 79 times and if we work out if we do 50 times 79 that's going to be equal to 3950 so the total number of seats in this amphitheater 3950 Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on partial sums of an arithmetic sequence. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics that you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.